Welcome to Mastering Work Problems, Part 4. Uh, this is presented by request. I had a, uh, a, somebody on YouTube who asked me to do a problem where something's lifted from, let's say, 10 feet to 20 feet instead of just the ground floor. So I'm doing a combination of that and one more additional work problem. So here we are, we have the problem. Uh, I'll read it out loud. A paint bucket is being lifted from the ground to the third floor of an apartment building where it is removed from the rope and the rest of the rope is hauled to the top of the eight-story building. The distance from the ground to the third floor is 30 feet and the distance from the ground to the top of the building is 90 feet. The bucket alone weighs two pounds and the five gallons of paint in it weighs 45 pounds. The rope weighs approximately one pound for each three feet of length. Unfortunately, the bucket had a hole at the bottom, and some of the paint was lost during the haul up to the, sorry, that was supposed to say, up to the third floor. If there is only, uh, or if there's only three gallons of paint left over once the bucket reached the third floor, and assuming that the paint leaked out at a constant rate, rate find the work in lifting the bucket from the ground to the third floor. Additionally, we're going to find also the work in lifting the bucket from the third to the eighth floor. This is to, this little additional part is by that request. For once, the first part of this problem is actually going to be the hardest part. The second part is not so bad. First part, we're lifting not only the bucket, but also this rope uh, a total of uh, 30 feet up. Now, this is a very interesting problem because every slice that we take for example, and I know that most people want to just take the slices from the height of 0 to height of 30, but I'll go ahead and take a little slice right there. If you take a slice right there, that slice is not just going to move up to the height of 30, it's actually going to move up 30 feet, right? Because we're getting this bucket and moving it up 30 feet. So this entire slice is going to move 30 feet. In fact, if I draw another slice, this slice right here is also likely to move up 30 feet. In fact, quite a few of the slices are. But now we have to think about the fact that beyond 60 feet, this stuff right here is not going to move up 30 feet. In other words, if I have a slice at, oh, and I'll draw a slice here, at, let's say 75 feet or something like that, that slice is not going to move up 30 feet. It can only move up 90 feet and then somebody just loops it on the ground. There's no more extra work to move that slice. So a little logic is needed for this problem. Even prior to tackling it, you need for the setup, you need to think about the logic. It turns out that any slice between zero feet, any slice of the rope, that is, between zero feet and 60 feet, that's going to move, that slice, no matter where I take it, is going to move 30 feet. However, once you're in this region up here, Again, you're pulling this entire rope up. So once you're in this region right here, this green slice that you see is going to move up, not 30 feet, because then it'll be above where we need to put it. It's only going to move up 15, and then somebody's going to drop that slice on the ground. So I have two regions that I'm going to worry about the integral for, or actually two regions I'm going to worry about the work for lifting the rope. In either case, work is just force times distance and luckily we have this in uh, pounds and we're only work worried about the rope for right now I'll worry about the bucket in a moment okay so in this top region in fact I'll go ahead and delineate this with uh, rope and I'll say top in this top region the force for that little green slice right there the one that I'm pointing at the force for that is well let's see I said it's one pound every three feet. All right? And that slice has a length of delta y feet. And then finally, I'm going to take that slice and I'm going to move it up a certain distance. The distance I'm going to move it is, well, if that is a height of y, I'm going to move it 90 minus y sub i feet. Uh, in fact, let me write feet in there. So again, this distance from 90 to this value, if that's at y sub i, then this distance here is just 90 minus y sub i. So that's as far as that slice is going, it's 90 minus y sub i feet. Now once I start canceling units here, I see this becomes, so what we can do here is cancel out the feet, 
and we can go ahead and rewrite this. It's going to be one third uh, times 90 minus y sub i times delta y, and then the units we're left with are foot pounds, which is exactly what you want for work. So that's how much work it's going to take to lift that green slice, any slice between 60 and 90. Now let's go ahead and worry about how much work it's going to take to lift a slice on this bottom part. And this is not going to be so bad. First of all, again we deal with the work formula. Work is just equal force times distance. And again we still have the same force. It's just one, the rope is one pound every three feet. And we only have a delta y slice for, it doesn't matter if it's that blue slice or the red slice, I'm just I'll just point at the red slice just for giggles here. And uh, so again that's delta y feet, that's the width of it. And finally uh, we are going to move that a distance, and the distance that slice is going to move, well if we're moving this whole rope up 30 feet, anything between 0 and 60 feet, any slice there is going to move 30 feet altogether. So this slice moves 30 feet. There's no 90 minus five or some weird thing like that. It's just going to move 30 feet. So here we go. This is just going to, when units cancel, here let me go ahead and cancel some units off. We get, I'll write down below, one-third times 30 uh, delta y and the units are foot pounds. By the way, I know that um, there are easier ways to do this, but I'm trying to stick with calculus the entire time. Mainly because I just want to show that you can do this using calculus. So here we go, uh, we have the amount of work it takes to lift the rope, the top of the rope, the amount of, that, of work that it takes to lift the bottom of the rope. So I'll go ahead on a separate page and just write these as an integral. So here it is, the work to lift the rope. From 0 to 60 we have 10 dy, um, that's the integral of that. Uh, plus the integral from 60 to 90 of 1 third 90 minus y dy. Alright, now that actually is some of the more difficult work there because there's some conceptual movements going on, right? You really have to think about what a slice does and how far you're moving it in this region and what a slice in this other region uh, does and how far you're moving it. So now let's talk about the bucket. So the bucket, now um, remember what I do with objects attached to a, the bottom of, of, a, of a chain. Uh, with everything we've done so far, uh, we can slice up. But when you have an object at the bottom of a chain, you can't slice it up, you have to scoot it. So we're going to scoot this by little steps, little steps, little steps. So those are our movements. These are our little, oops, they're actually delta y's. I dislike when authors use delta x's there because you're actually moving in the y direction. All right, so let's see how much work it takes to move this or to scoot it just a little bit in the y direction. Remember, work is force uh, times distance, and I just said that the distance we're going to scoot it is just a little delta y. So that's that's the initial part of this problem is just knowing that we're scooting the bucket a little delta y. Now we have to worry about the force. Let me put a little set of parentheses here. Now the bucket, the bucket is two pounds, and then we have an additional 45 pounds of uh, paint in it. Now that's initially. We're going to lose some over time. So I'm just going to, or not over time actually, we're going to lose some for every scoot that we make. To find out how much we're losing, we have to kind of write a proportion here. And the proportion is that we had five gallons that weighed 45 pounds, and we ended up with three gallons, and we don't know how many pounds that is, so I'm just going to write x pounds. If you solve this out, so in other words, uh, some people will cross multiply, some people will flip both sides, it doesn't really matter what you do, you'll get down to that x, the unknown, is equal to 27 pounds. So we ended at 27 pounds. So from 0 feet to 30 feet, we lost 20, or we, we, we lost, actually, 18 pounds. So, because uh, we ended up with right 27. So, we lost 18 pounds in 30 feet. So, that means that we lose 
18 thirtieths of a pound per foot. And of course this can be simplified to three-fifths of a pound per foot. So here we go. Now let's talk about the force of the bucket, or in other words the weight of the bucket and the fluid in it, the paint in it, and any given scoot, it, we have the bucket that weighs two pounds, we have the initial weight of the paint which is 45 pounds, and we lose three-fifths of a pound per foot and we're at this many feet. Y feet. So Y is, is our height. Y, actually it's supposed to be Y sub I if we really want to be very technical here. So let's go ahead and clean this up. This is going to be 47 minus 3 fifths Y sub I times delta Y. Again because we're in pounds we don't have to worry about gravity that's already figured in. So um, this is this is actually the the work it takes just to scoot us a little bit. So now we'll go ahead and include this calculation into our uh, integration. So the work to lift the bucket is the integral from 0 to 30 of 47 minus 3 fifths y and then dy. So the total work you would just sum up all of these works. Well now that we've gotten the bucket lifted off this thing the last little bit of this problem is not too bad. We just want to lift the rest of the rope up to the top. So in other words, we want to take a slice here and move it up to the top. So I'll just take a random slice and I'll just do a slice like this. And I'll say this slice is at a height of y sub i. Obviously the distance that slice is going to go is 90 minus y sub i. So we have a distance and the force of that slice is again one-third of a pound per foot times the delta y uh, feet. So I'll go ahead and write all that stuff down. The work of the ith slice there is force of the ith slice times the distance that that ith slice is going. The force we had already said is one-third of a pound per foot times delta y feet, so that's the force, one-third delta y pounds right there, and the distance we're moving it is just 90 minus y sub i. Again, if you look at the picture, that should make sense. The slice is moving 90 minus y sub i. The, the sum, or how are you going to add up all these works, well, you're not going to sum from zero, because there are no slices from zero to 30. There's none. So our summation is actually going to start at the 30-foot level and end at the 90-foot level. And again, we get this one-third times 90 minus y, and then that delta y becomes a dy. And of course you can figure out what that is, but that, that gives us the amount of work uh, to lift the remaining rope to the top of the building. And that's how this type of problem is done.